Got it. All right. Let the people in. Hello, hello. Welcome to Letterform Lectures, online edition. As you're coming in, please uh, type in where you're coming from in the chat so we know. And if you can also let us know what brought you here, that'd be great. Interested in, uh, in our speaker and letter form lectures generally, or what floats your boat. So um, let's see, let's give it a, a couple more seconds, let more people come in. Reminder, drop where you're coming from in the chat. And uh, if you have questions as we go along for the speaker, um, please put them in the Q&A and then we'll um, deal with those at the end, okay? Okay. All right, it's just six o'clock now, so I imagine that more people will be joining in the next couple of minutes. Welcome, 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 welcome. Please put where you're coming from in the chat and what brought you to today's lecture. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get rolling. Hello, everybody. My name is Grendel. I'm Education Director at Letterform Archive. And we have, as I mentioned, an international audience today. So please type in where you're coming from in the chat. And I want to give a big shout out, first of all, to Skilla Zaccolini, who is greasing the gears behind the scenes here on this lecture series. So thank you, as always, Skilla. Okay, Letterform Archive is the home of Type West, which is our school of type design. And we are also the hosts of this lecture series. So we've got a slew of great lectures and public workshops for you coming up this year. First up is the Flexible Mirror. That is happening this weekend in person at Letterform Archive. Join us this weekend for this boot, book design boot camp is led by award-winning senior UC Press designer, Kevin Barrett Kane and Penguin Radnam House's Zeitgeist imprint senior designer, Emma Christine Hall. Don't miss this. Also in person at Letterform Archive, we have uh, Type Etiquette with Angie Wang. And this workshop with CCA veteran instructor, Angie Wang will help you get your typesetting back on track. So Angie has tailored this workshop for beginners or anyone whose typesetting skills are getting rusty as she patiently uh, de demystifies grids, columns, type size, rags, justification, and all the other elements of a well-designed page. Okay, we've got some more letter form lectures coming up after this one. This is actually in person um, next Thursday. Antonio Cavadoni and Chris Wilson of Love From Design Firm will explain the process behind their Love From typeface, which is their twist on a Baskerville revival. So don't miss this in person lecture. That's happening next week at San Francisco's Caret Auditorium. Then we have working with CSS doesn't have to make you cry. Put your handkerchiefs down forever as Hui Jing explains how to avoid the five stages of grief that usually accompany designing on the web with CSS. Join us online for this entertaining and eye-opening talk. So finally, if you haven't seen our latest exhibition, it's time for you to roll on down to Letterform Archive and check out Subscription to Mischief, which is a groundbreaking exhibition on graffiti writing in the 1990s. Just don't tag the elevator on your way out. To help keep great le lectures like today's going, go to letarc.org slash join and become a member today. And um, finally, be sure to follow us on Instagram to stay on top of upcoming events and programs. 
Okay. Welcome to Letter Form Lectures 2023. Letter Form Lectures are co presented by the Letter Form Archive and SFPL. Letter Form Archive is a nonprofit institution that houses over 100,000 works of graphic design history. Come visit us sometime and let us show you what we mean by radical accessibility. We'd like to thank Adobe for generously sponsoring the video recording of this series. You can view all Letterform lectures online soon after they happen. Just check our website, letterformarchive.org. All right, main event. For those of you who were looking for a lecture on the web programming language, you're in the wrong room. Today's is on the scripts of Java, not JavaScript. <laughs> Our speaker today is Aditya Bayu Perdana, who is a lecturer at Telkom University in Indonesia. Bayu is also a typographer, a typographic consultant, and a type designer who specializes in Indonesian scripts. Here's a funny story about Bayu. He used to write Javanese script on the whiteboard in the classroom before tests. He knew that none of his instructors could understand the script. So they never questioned that he was actually writing notes that would help him cheat. Scandal. He'd just look up from his test and look at the notes he wrote, and the teachers were none the wiser. Mm, you have to act pretty... a bit so you don't look suspicious. Mm. It's actually pretty clever. It's like if I had... Um, Learn to write in Old English or something like that. And, uh, but that ship sailed. If I ever go back to school, though, I'll know what to do. Okay, without further ado, let's welcome Bayou. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, attending this. And thank you, Grendel, for the introduction and uh, the scandalous, uh, scandalous thing that I do. So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, again, I would like to uh, express my thanks to uh, Letterform Archive for this uh, opportunity uh, so that I can share with you uh, my experience and um, yeah, experience in uh, diving into Javanese script uh, archive and uh, reintroducing them to the public sphere because as we can uh, as we will later see in uh, my uh, lecture is that Javanese script has a very long heritage but its contemporary application is uh, a bit waning and so there's a bit of effort in um, making this script more feasible and more uh, uh, and more visible to the public. So I'm going to share my screen so that we can go directly into uh, our uh, lecture. Uh, if I can have a moment. Okay. Is it showing, Grendel? Looking good. Okay, so let us begin. So. Uh, the today's lecture uh, I uh, I title it as hidden diversity lessons from four centuries of Javanese script heritage. Why hidden? It's because like uh, m if we truly dive into the archive, there's actually a lot of interesting uh, cases of Javanese script application that can be applied to modern times, but. Most of the time, this cannot be found in a casual Google search. You have to be a bit more dedicated to find those things. But lucky for you, I have um, compiled these interesting cases into this presentation. And hopefully, it will inspire you. And maybe you'll be uh, inspired to search more and share it with me or everyone else interested in um, in index script typography. Okay, so here's a map of Indonesia and 
uh, not just Indonesia actually, the whole area of Southeast Asia is well known for its cultural diversity and linguistic is among uh, the among the cultural diversity known from this region. So in Indonesia alone, um, even though the uh, national language is Indonesia, Indonesian, uh, um, most of the time uh, people are at least bilingual. They spoke Indonesian in formal settings on uh, works uh, on capital city, but in most of the region and at home, they speak a regional language. And so there are over um, 10,000 uh, name language in, oh wait, sorry. Uh, there are about 800 name languages in a uh, 2010 census and that's not, or some language that uh, some consider different but others consider the same. So a lot of languages. And uh, from these 800, about a dozen uh, traditional scripts use in um, use in Indonesia. So uh, we can start from the north here in the island of Sumatra in northern Sumatra. So here uh, here we have uh, Lake Toba. We have the Batak script, and then further down there is the Rajang script and the Lampung script. Uh, moving on to the island of Java, here we have. Uh, the Sundanese script is in the western part of the island. Uh, Javanese script is used uh, throughout the island plus Madura here. And then the Balinese script is used in Bali uh, of its namesake and then also Lombok. Um, then there's some historic scripts like uh, Palawa. Uh, it has many names in books. Some say it as a grand, uh, old Grantha, a square box Brahmi and so on. Uh, it is the oldest script found in Indonesia, uh, found in uh, East Kalimantan and then uh, a bit of Western Java. And then there's the Kawi script that is used throughout the island. So many inscription uh, in Kawi can be found in Sumatra, Java, and even to the Philippines, the Laguna Copper Plate inscription example. And here in uh, South Sulawesi, we have the Lontara script which is primarily used by the Bugis, but also by the Makassar and the Wajo people. And then uh, before uh, the Dutch and Europeans came and introduced the Roman script or Latin, uh, we have also used the uh, Arabic script and modified version of it called Jawi and Pagon to write uh, Malay. And it is used as standard correspondence um, script for various kingdoms and sultanates during the 16th century until 20th century. And all these scripts uh, are used in a kind of uh, layered uh, mode. So uh, there is not like one script can only be used for uh, one language. Usually there's a multivalent uh, relation like uh, Balinese script is not only used for the Balinese language, but it is also used for old Javanese. It is also used for Sanskrit. It is also used for uh, Sasak language, and uh, uh, and so and so is the case for many other scripts in Indonesia. And for today's lecture, we're going to um, focus on the relatively small island but very dense, uh, densely populated island of Java here shown in the map. So uh, uh, today it is uh, administratively administratively divided into the capital. And then there's uh, Banten here, West Java, Central Java, the special region of Yogyakarta, and then East Java here. Okay, this island is home to some of the most lavish of the traditional uh, writing tradition of Indonesia. And um, the kratons or the uh, royal palaces of, uh, of Java has the a resource to commission lavish manuscripts like a, like this. So it's not only uh, previously decorated with uh, gold leaves and uh, expensive dyes and, and uh, margin decoration like this, but also the calligraphy of the script itself is also um, well made. So we have a, ver a, ver a complex uh, writing tradition here. And uh, like most of the other Indic scripts in, in, in Indonesia, the Javanese script is an abugida. 
So this is would uh, make it similar in like Devnagari or uh, Tamil and Thai and Khmer. So the basic unit of one letter is equals one syllable with inherent vowel a, and then that vowel is changed through the application of various diacritics. It can be uh, it can be inserted above, uh, below, uh, before, before and after, and sort of like that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of letters. Uh, usually now in schools, uh, it, only 20 letters are taught because it is the one used for the basic Javanese language. But because the Javanese script um, uh, grew out of a more ancient script that is uh, attuned to Sanskrit, there's a lot of sounds that has become redundant in the centuries of development, but they are still retained for uh, orthographic purposes. So like there's the here as the common diacritics and there's like long diacritics that are not used in modern Javanese, but you will use it if you want to write Sanskrit or Old Javanese or a lot of other things. And then there's letters, there's uh, punctuation, which we shall discuss uh, more later. And so, yeah, it, there's a lot of uh, characters involved. Uh, it is used for a, um, a variety of purposes uh, in the past. So they're uh, ranging from casual magazines, such as the Kajawen magazines, uh, or like note of rice purchases. So this is like a, a palm leaf note that simply said that, okay, one pickle of rice is one real, um, uh, a shopping note. And then like, this is from a, a model of a um, ambulance. Uh, and here the, the, the office of the public health service is written in uh, Dutch. This is around 19 something, I forgot. Uh, Dutch, this is Javanese, and this is uh, Malay in Roman script. Okay, so it, it is used for a lot of uh, contexts in everyday life. But nowadays, common use of Indonesian scripts, including Javanese, has been discontinued. Many people today are very fluent in uh, speaking Javanese script, but that does not necessarily mean that they can write Javanese script or even read it. So uh, due to the prevalence of Latin orthography for everyday purpose, there are revitalization programs and it has been pursued since the 80s, but none can be said to be successful in bringing traditional scripts to lively use among younger generations. And so we found many uh, op-ed and um, occasional lamentation in newspapers saying that, oh, this, uh, this uh, heritage is fading away. And, and also because like these scripts are rarely talked about in practical manner, Indonesian scripts are always, almost always today talk in the realm of philology, orthography, uh, symbolism and mysticism. Rarely do Indonesian scripts are taught in the context of design. And so um, uh, if I can give an example, uh, this is an example given to me by Erin McLaughlin about uh, how this could happen if it's in Latin. So imagine a world when uh, that in every context from ticket to uh, books and uh, wedding invitation and you can only use the font Arial or Times New Roman. There's no design in that uh, type of world. There's no choice of fonts. Uh, you cannot uh, make a design based on the context. And that is basically what happening in most Indonesian scripts. You are stuck with only one kind of terrible font and then it is used indiscriminately in every cases. And especially like if you search Javanese script on Google, many results are only like very, uh, very boring tables in monotonous font and there is no visual diversity and you have no idea that Javanese script was once used in a wide sense uh, in the wider uh, community and there are many graphical variations of it. And if you go to Java now, you can hardly find the script in public spaces. Usually you can only find like disappointingly, disappointingly small uh, secondary use like this and not often, um, not rarely, uh, 
souvenirs like it like this is like typed with gibberish Japanese script. So this is cannot be read at all. I I assume that whoever made this like type it directly into a QWERTY keyboard without being able to read it at all. So the result is like a gibberish that cannot be read at all. So uh, you you have to be like kind of ready for this kind of disappointments if you uh, go to the public space in Java and actually seek this script. And so many people today, uh, so in Indonesia, uh, in uh, designer circles, like they can uh, pretty much agree like this, the double story A and single story A is like the same thing. Uh, just different graphic variation of it. And if you want to put a swash in it, uh, the tail is the one that uh, you have to elongate and not this part. So uh, this is not the case for like a Javanese script when given like this glyph, for example, uh, many have no idea uh, which part of this uh, can be uh, put into, uh, can be diversified. Like, is it the, the initial tail or is it the, the exit tail? Can it be, uh, connected, uh, uh, people usually have very little idea because they rarely see Javanese script in a variety of contexts compared to Latin, where they can just go to the grocery store and see that every product have a slightly different fonts and they know the, uh, the breadth of variation that is possible for a letter. So um, this is a tip that my uh, dad was given me by a, a friend, uh, Ben Mitchell. He specialized in uh, Southeast Asian scripts in the mainland, so like uh, Khmer, Thai, and uh, Burmese. And so he has uh, tips on how to make, how to design a script that you are not familiar with. So many Javanese today are not familiar with the Japanese script. And so you have to approach it as if like you don't know the script and you don't have access to people who can read the script fluently. And so in order for you to design that script, you have to have a very strong research background to figure out the archetype and then the common elements. And then you can uh, design uh, a font or a lettering around it. And for this case of Javanese, uh, it's helpful to remind uh, to remember that not all cases are printed. Uh, so this is from uh, last year type we can talk. So, uh, uh, this is the case for Nubian typography. So Arba Yijal said that uh, in many cases, um, uh, let um, manuscriptal forms cannot be directly transferred into later typefaces due to technological constraints. So they, they are kind of simplify it. And so um, similarly, in the case of Javanese, uh, we have, uh, at least in my experience, you cannot rely on typographic uh, typography implementation alone, but uh, you have to kind of look into old handwritten manuscripts to see the original flow and the natural writing styles that uh, develop over the centuries. So uh, here are a here is the basic timeline. So uh, the Javanese script evolved uh, slowly from the Kawi script uh, before the uh, 1600s. And it, it is used in a variety of writing medium. The oldest one is uh, Lontar here. Lontar is a kind of palm leaf. Uh, it, it, if, it, it's treated, uh, if it's treated, dried, and um, uh, given enough Preparation, it is a tool for writing that is common in ancient Java and also today's Bali. And then paper came, uh, and then uh, the medium quickly switched to paper. Uh, metal type was uh, invented, Javanese metal type was invented around the 1800s, early 1800s. Uh, although the most uh, ubiquitous font was first uh, released in 1836. And then it, um, handwriting and uh, printing goes hand in hand until 1945, that is Indonesian independence, and then World War II, a lot of economic problems and metal types uh, disappeared. But thankfully, in uh, 2008, uh, Javanese script entered the Unicode. Um, theoretically, it should made uh, typing possible in computer, but a lot of times 
uh, people here don't use Unicode fonts and uh, it kind of makes um, electronic exchange kind of, uh, uh, make several failures in uh, economic, uh, electronic exchange, but we'll talk about that later. And so uh, here's the rough evolution. So this is the precursor of Javanese script, uh, the Kawi script. And even in this uh, early, form before the 1600s there are already a lot of uh, graphic variation and styles there's the early kawi quadratic kawi late kawi buddha kawi and uh, started to evolve into the regional scripts of indonesia uh, from 16 six, 1600s onward uh, so we have uh, balinese javanese batak lampung lontara and makassar and we'll start with the from at least the medium, yeah, uh, from the earliest one. So this is palm leaf. Uh, palm leaf has a very old track record of use in uh, Java and Bali and in general. So, uh, but it should be noted that writing in palm leaf doesn't involve um, a pen uh, and dub it in ink and write it, but you have to uh, incise the characters on a uh, palm leaf using a small knife. Um, and then after you have incised it, you uh, blacken it with a mixture of an um, oil and other plant substance so that uh, the incised part uh, is black and readable. In this method of writing, um, uh, Balin Stripe today will tell you that it is encouraged to use very uh, curvilinear forms because if you use too much perpendicular line, the palm leaf would snap. So uh, this medium encourages the use of a lot of curvilinear lines, which will become uh, one of the basic forms uh, of Javanese later on. So this is one of the uh, examples of early, early Javanese in palm leaves. Uh, this one is from a fragment of Arjuna Wiwaha, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see that the scribe is very stylish. Like he made uh, he made the incisions uh, with a lot of swashes and uh, extra curls that make it uh, very attractive. This is another example. And uh, but compared to uh, Bali, so Bali and Java has uh, quite strong uh, historic traditions, uh, historic uh, not, uh, knots and ties. Uh, but compared to Bali, uh, Java quickly switched to paper as the Kawi script gradually evolved into Javanese script. Uh, this is this coincides with the introduction of Islam into the island, and because the Islamic and Arabic tradition uh, favors uh, paper and codex format, uh, Java. Uh, quickly switches from palm leaf into paper relatively. Uh, paper is a more flexible medium and it can um, it can accommodate a lot of more uh, individual writing style. So in palm leaf, you have to, uh, because of the incising method, you kind of have to be a, a very experienced master in order to create a personal style. Um, paper is less demanding than that and, and we have uh, uh, we can see a lot of more variation in paper manuscripts. And this is some of the oldest one, uh, Suluk Bonang. It is now in the collection of uh, Leiden University in Dutch. It already came to the Netherlands before the, uh, before the 1500s or 1600s. Uh, I have to make sure about that. So this is quite old. And uh, this is another example of a letter sent from the palace or canton of Banten to uh, J.P. Kuhn uh, in Batavia in 1619. Uh, this is also on paper. So uh, the style is a bit different already in this uh, early stages. And an, an interesting case that I like to give an example is what, I, uh, what is uh, known as the Raffles paper now in the collection of uh, British Library. So uh, in 1816, uh, Thomas Stamford Raffles, the Governor General of uh, East Indies, was retiring. And so um, various uh, regions and uh, sultans and kings in, in Java sent a, like, like a farewell uh, letter 
a diplomatic farewell letter to the two rifles. And uh, we can see that each region has its own distinctive style of writing Japanese script because um, there's really uh, in pre-modern Java, uh, although ports uh, definitely connect between towns, uh, movement was kind of slow. There's not a highway that connecting all of these regions and um, this and there is no impulse for towards standardization. So each uh, area tend to develop its own uh, personal style. Uh, and we can see that uh, from the Pesisir or the coastal and the hinterland and between West, Central and East Java, there's, there's quite palpable difference between uh, lettering style. This, and even um, neighbor, neighboring places such as Surakarta and Yogyakarta. So this is relatively uh, nearby uh, palaces, rival palaces in Central Java. Uh, they can have quite different uh, visual style. So this is the letter from Surakarta. It is characterized by very large uh, swashes, which pushes the uh, the the uh, the space between line into very extreme. A more compact style is used in Yogyakarta, and it is characterized by the use of a kind of blocky geometric. Um, uh, shape, which is known as mboto. Mboto means brick. So it reminds people of like a stack of bricks. Uh, moving on to uh, West Java, we have the this letter from Cirebon, uh, quite different from the letter uh, written by the region of Bandung, which is a hinterland town, so near the mountain. This is the a port town uh, near the um, coast, northern coast of in the northern coast of Java. And then we have Semarang and Lasem. Both of this is on the uh, Pesisir, on the coastal, but has different demographic. Uh, Semarang is more, uh, has uh, the Dutch and colonial establishment, establishment has more control in Semarang. While Lasem is known for its uh, Chinese and Peranakan communities, both of this is from the region or Bupati and quite different style. My personal favorite is the one that is sent from the Bupati of Bangil. That is a town near Pasuruan in East Java. And like uh, his uh, describes uh, writing style is very stylish. It, it kind of reminds me of the uh, spidery copper plate of Victorian era. Um, doubtful that uh, he based it on that, probably just a coincidence that it uh, that it kind of looks alike. And yeah, it's very stylish. And uh, I, I once met, made a fun of, out of this. So yeah, a lot of variation in Japanese script. And sometimes the uh, more adventurous script, uh, scribes uh, toy around with, um, with different script applying to a non-Japanese script. And then he took the style of it to Japanese script. So here's an example from Cherbon. Cherubon was kind of buddy buddy with uh, with uh, English uh, in, around the 1700s or 1800s. I forgot. And so here, uh, funnily enough, he he's he probably familiar with uh, the serif of uh, Latin, and then he tried to adapt it into Japanese script, and he used it as uh, titlings and subheadings, and uh, the result is quite interesting. So this is definitely Japanese. So this is puniko serat ubaya la 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 la, and uh, yeah, he adapted Latin conventions into Japanese script. So that's quite interesting. And then also here in Cirebon, known for also known for its uh, Chinese acculturation, uh, the uh, the Chinese like cloud that is often found in Cirebonese um, visual art is also applied here into this uh, into the Japanese script. This is a, a memorial plaque in one of the in one of the palaces of Cirebon, the Kacirebonan Palace, if I'm not mistaken. And also, um, in any manuscript, the most visually interesting one is actually this uh, punctuation. It uh, uh, There's no Latin equivalent. Um, maybe the nearest equivalent is that uh, pilcrow mark 
medieval pilgrim mark uh, uh, in um, a medieval manuscript that tend to be very decorative. So uh, uh, the thing that needs to be known about traditional Japanese literature is that they are not designed to be read in silence. Uh, they are designed to be sung. So there are uh, uh, certain themes where there are fixed meters uh, with fixed number of syllables, uh, and uh, it is designed to have to be sung. So the uh, kind of uh, lyrics of the song. And this, uh, because the Japanese script does not uh, have spaces between uh, between words, uh, the kanto marker, the first markers tend to be very elaborate. So the singer of the text uh, have visual cue that uh, this part of the stanza is ending. So this is an example from Surat Jaya Lengkara Wulang, and this is plain padaluhur for comparison. So even the plain version is kind of kind of a hassle to to write. It can be lots of things. So yeah, this is kind of like describes a uh, playground in showing their first virtuosity in uh, writing. It can be uh, it can be elongated. It can have a uh, uh, floral elements like this, it can have uh, wings like this, and sometimes, uh, not all manuscript, but the most expensive one commissioned by Palace, uh, sometimes the temple markers have a visual clues of the kind of meter that will be uh, used in the next part. So for example here, uh, if it use uh, uh, a wing-like motif, probably the next part should be sung with the dandang gula meter. So dandang means uh, crow. So if there is a bird motif, probably the next part is sung with, with this part, uh, with this uh, uh, first theme. If it's a goldfish, a mermaid like this, probably the next part is uh, sung in maskumambang. Maskumambang literally means uh, floating gold. And then so goldfish in uh, water reminds of that. So like, yeah, it can be very complex, but only the most uh, expensive manuscript do this, like not, uh, not your everyday manuscript do this. So it's, uh, uh, it's a niche thing in itself. And then came printing. So when, uh, when uh, European came to Java, the uh, and uh, the Malay archipelago, archipelago in general. The first which they're interested in is Malay because that is the lingua franca. But as they become more entrenched uh, in Java, uh, they become more interested in Javanese uh, literature to communicate with the ruling elites in, in Java. Uh, the, first, uh, the first Javanese script to be printed is the one, this table in history of Java. But as you can see, it is not movable type. So like very, uh, only a static uh, table and cannot be used to uh, write in the text. But because there's an interest for Javanese script literature to be uh, reproduced and learned by Europeans, uh, uh, there's more, uh, there are interests to make uh, movable types. So this is the early Javanese movable type made in 1825 and 1829 by uh, uh, Paul Flischingen and, uh, and Gottlob Bruckner. Um, uh, this one was made for Batavia Koran, um, a government uh, a government news publication. And this one, Gottlob Bruckner, um, his translation of the Bible. Uh, it wasn't quite a hit. I mean, Technically, they were praised uh, for solving the problem of uh, arranging uh, arranging the main letters and diacritics because at the time it was a technical challenge. But stylistic-wise, it is called kind of sloppy because the ideal script, according to specialized uh, European specialists such as uh, Gericke, is that uh, the Surakarta style is the one that should be uh should be used for javanese type but obviously javanese uh, the surakarta style is very space intensive like if you if you make this into print it will be very cost inefficient and that is what uh what a printmaker uh, usually complains and cannot uh, make Javanese script due to this insistence of uh, this very ornate style and uh, the 
uh, the economic consideration if you use that ornate style into print. But then, uh, but then Tako Rorda, um in 1830 eh, 1830 something um uh designed a compromise where he uh emulated the traditional portion of the x height the x height being less than the than the ascender and descender so he emulated that into his uh, metal type uh and he also added the consistent uh thin and thick uh a scheme uh, where the upper line where lines that go upward are thin and lines that go downward are thick so this is he adapted it from uh, european typographic uh, norms and uh, it this practice is not found in most javanese script at the time and so he tried to emulate uh, emulate that for javanese script doesn't really like that. He he thinks that it's it is kind of uh, tacky and not uh, authentic Japanese script. But Garika was kind of tired in in making complaints, so he 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 later approved it. And so from this moment onward, uh, Japanese script publication uh, blossom. Uh, magazines can be printed in it, and then mundane government documents like this can be printed with it. Uh, there are ads in Japanese script. And, and there are also display types, and uh, this is some of the early ones by Gottlieb Schilgel Milch. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, he made a very uh, ornate Rook style Javanese, uh, which is uh, reviewed by uh, in our in an article by uh, Joe De Bartmaker. This is a very premium and expensive uh, uh, font, and like it is not so. Uh, by the package, but you order it per letter because it's so large and expensive. Uh, it is, I saw it used in one or two books in, uh, printed in Batavia in, in, in Java. So it's not very accessible uh, anyway, but very interesting looking. And then of course, there's a lot of uh, European typographic uh, norms that are also adapted for Javanese, uh, uh, adapted by Javanese uh, parties, like drop caps, which is like an alien thing to Java, to, to, to traditional Javanese script, but it is used by Muhammad Musa for his Dongeng Dongeng Pian Tengen, which is a collection of uh, books uh, in the Sundanese language. And then interestingly, uh, the first newspaper in the island which uses um, indigenous language, the Bromartani, uh, also adapted black letter for its masthead. So um, using black letter for the masthead of uh, a newspaper was, was a thing that ties to uh, European practice because most of the time it's the boldest font that is available. And so it is commonly used as masthead, uh, but Javanese script has no precedent of like having the boldest one. And so it so for the first newspaper, interestingly, it adapted European practice of making a uh, of using black letter. And so um, I don't know who uh, cut this, but it's very uh, it looks very nice in my opinion. So the the bottom part is the the plain version here. And this is the uh, the the mass hat that is used for the all uh, run print until it is discontinued in 1900, if I'm not mistaken. And so this is also an example of how European uh, typographic forms were adapted for Japanese. So this is a book printed in Semarang um, celebrating the coronation of Queen Wilhelmina in, 18, in 1898. Uh, and you can see that even in this single title page, there's there's black letter, Tuscan style with uh, Tuscan style, kind of Baroque one. So yeah, um, uh, for special occasion, you have to order special specially designed Japanese script. Uh, you have to make a display type, not just like uh, writing plain old Japanese. So uh, it's quite elaborate and. Uh, in uh, in more humble publications such as Kejawen, so Kejawen here is like a monthly, bi-monthly magazine. You can also find many uh, ads that are using inventive typography 
a, a one-time deal usually. So we have like this, an adaptation of Umbot Tarim Box, so kind of blocky. And then there's the reverse contrast and then a more casual, relaxed one. Uh, the, this reverse contrast thing is found in a lot of uh, um, advertisement from Balai Pustaka. Balai Pustaka is the uh, is Dutch is in this um, national printing agency. There's also like the blocky and kind of futuristic looking uh, Japanese scripts such as this in many uh, column ads and uh, advertisement. Uh, as I said before, this, this doesn't seem to be an adaptation of uh, European uh, European style. So uh, the kind of geometric, uh, uh, geometric grotesque that uh, like Paul Renner made was not yet established in Europe. So this this doesn't seem to be adapted from that, but rather an adaptation of an existing uh, manuscriptal tradition which used blocky letters from uh, uh, from Yogyakarta, the Mboto style that uh, I mentioned earlier. There's also this, like uh, what is even happening here? I don't know, but it's very interesting. And, uh, and also like uh, the kind of, uh, Art Deco adventurous stuff like this is also sometimes found in book covers. Yeah, but as print culture matured and demand for book rises, uh, Latin increasing, was increasingly preferred in the early 20th century. And this is due to economic reasons. So because as, as we've seen before, the default uh, font for Javanese emulated a very uh, space in intensive form. And so printing anything in Javanese script requires around uh, double the space of printing anything in uh, Romanized Javanese. And this kept uh, Javanese script book uh, more expensive than Latin or Romanized Javanese book. And native population who already able to read Javanese script usually can quickly learn Latin script. Uh, Roman script. So, um, yeah, the uh, Roman script version is usually more compact and cheaper. There are um, attempts at uh, trying to alleviate this issue. So there's uh, there's an experimental font uh, where uh, he he uh, the designer tried to simplify uh, the script and, and make it more uh, condensed, but uh, this is uh, the this is only experimentation and it is never released in public. It is I don't think it is considered readable by uh, by average Japanese. So it it only remains a a, a a thought experiment on paper. And then World War II happened and Indonesia was uh, striving for independence. There's the uh, Japanese occupation of Indonesia after the Dutch. Uh, uh, Dutch colonization, and then uh, after we declared independence in 1945, there are various battles of independence until uh, uh, our independence was recognized by the Dutch in 1949. And so in this time of economic crisis and uh, calls for national unity, using a regional script for one, uh, one ethnic of the population is not a priority. The first um, the first education minister program for increasing literacy was focused on uh, Latin script. So here, pemberantasan buta huruf means uh, the elimination of illiteracy and the illiteracy meant here is illiteracy in Roman script for writing Bahasa Indonesia, the national language. As I said, um, preservation of traditional regional scripts cannot be a priority at moments like this. And so a generation has passed where people don't find Javanese script in most everyday situation. Like before, we, you can see that it, it is found in notes, in books, in, in ambulance, but uh, a couple decades has passed where none of that happened. And so uh, the application of script after this time kind of, if I may say, suck. 
Um, so for example, this is the standard Japanese type in 19th to 20th century, which I said before is based on Surakarta type. It has, it has uh, uh, by Takororda, by Takororda, it is based on an established, established writing tradition. It has uh, consistent seam and whatnot. And this is the overuse, not very good uh, 21st century common font. Like it, it design show lacks lack of reference to any attested source. Like, like looking at these details, like uh, uh, this unrefined details make me sad, very sad. And uh, matters such as variation of it that is uh, found in many uh, manuscript and archive like this. This is all letter for ba, and you can see that uh, there are many visual variation of it. Like all of this knowledge is no longer common. So yeah, people usually have no idea that uh, the letter ba can can have gaps in it. It can be connected with. Uh, it can be connected like this and so on. And uh, uh, what I try to do in my work is like uh, learning this, uh, learning the anatomy and the uh, visual language of the Javanese script and uh, like try to introduce it to more modern audiences. And this starts by like breaking down the components like this. I try to identify the anatomy and uh, how they are, uh, how they can have variations in certain styles. And by learning this from the archive, uh, I learned that for, uh, I learned that, for example, a Japanese script has to have a lot more leading compared to Latin, and the distribution of black and white uh, mass is quite different because uh, so because Latin have gaps between words while Javanese does not. Actually, when you made the diacritic uh, large, uh, it makes it makes the texture of the text more variable and thus more readable. And what I often see it uh, today in people trying to use uh, the Javanese script like earnestly, like they have good intention, is usually they don't uh, have time to actually learn what is proper and expected of Javanese script. Like for example, in proportion, uh, the classic Javanese script proportion is usually have like the X height is the smallest component, component uh, compared to the sender and the descender. Sometimes it can be reduced, especially in uh, advertisement and whatnot. But many people today tend to squish the diacritic into ridiculous proportion because they equate the Javanese diacritics with Latin diacritics, which indeed are kind of small, or like Arabic uh, diacritics. So because uh, they are not acquainted with the norms of Javanese, usually the result is kind of disappointing, in, in my opinion. And so this is an example of uh, what I try to do in my uh, works. So this is my uh, calligraphy for, uh, for a competition in Yogyakarta. So this is uh, using a brush pen. I try to learn the uh, emulate the print of how the upward stroke is a thin and the downward stroke is thick and this is uh this is using a drawing pen a more uh a style that adheres more to pre-print style uh but uh beside me there's now a lot of more young communities uh that are more interested in using javanese script and usually young people uh, usually demands variation, like they ask, uh, how many fonts are there here? So usually um, slightly older generation uh, haven't had the chance to ask that question. They still ask about how to write this, how to write that, but younger generation from the get-go usually uh, uh, wants a graphic variation for the script. And so six different fonts with different styles. And new small to medium enterprises such as Bahnu uh, here, uh, whose uh, whose designer is my acquaintances, uh, try to create uh, products such as shirt design or top design that uses uh, Indonesian scripts, including Javanese, as a, as a design component that is well actually designed. So, uh, bef uh, at the beginning, I told you that there are many um, souvenir that doesn't 
want to put an effort in like putting Javanese script, like they simply type whatever. And uh, Bahnu is a counter example where the script is actually uh, designed and has design uh, informed design decision behind it. And uh, I knew several people who also tried to explore this and showcasing the graphic uh, possibilities of Javanese script, such as uh, Arif Budiarto, uh, Nurhol is here, uh, Adian Gunarta, and like Wisnu Adikusuma. Uh, you can visit their um, their social media handles there if you want to see some of their works. And uh, uh, sharing uh, here, I'm going to share some of my works that that comes after like lots of that research and diving into the archives and finding the diversity in archival materials. So some of my earliest work is like this, is trying to uh, make a Javanese version of um, Latin logotype. Uh, like I, 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 I was very fascinated with how like um, the design of Latin, uh, certain Latin logotype can be transferred into different script, but still retain their uh, visual vocabulary, like the Thai Vespa here, and uh, like the Thai Coca-Cola. And for the Arabic FedEx, I, I was expect, uh, especially uh, very impressed after knowing that uh, the Arabic version here uh, kept the negative space of the arrow from the Latin one. So yeah, uh, I was curious how uh, Javanese script can adapt to this kind of thing. Uh, and maybe comparing Javanese script with uh, Thai and um, uh, Thai and Arabic is not very apple to orange comparison because Javanese script today does not have any official status. Like uh, Thai script is used on a national level in Thai in Thailand, while Javanese script has is not used in any official capacity in Java. But in the Philippines, uh, I think a comparable case could be made to the script of Baibayin. So Baibayin is also a regional script uh, used primarily in the island of Luzon. And there, unlike in Java, where the, the call to, to preserve the script is usually initiated by government bureaucrats, uh, there, Bai Bai is uh, has become the interest of many young designers who try to sh uh, uh, prove, show to the world that the Bai Bai In script uh, actually has a lot, uh, has the flexibility and capacity to respond to a lot of today's design uh, expectation, just like Latin. So, uh, so they can be used for a lot of logotype, and so. Uh, this is some of the examples, and I was uh, quite inspired by it. So um, this is some of my work. So um, translating from the original logotype to the uh, adapted Japanese one usually required me for like first uh, adapt the pronunciation because Javanese uh, script is based on pronunciation, not the original spelling, especially considering that English uh, spelling is not very systemized. And so after finding the pronunciation and the original logotype, I tried to combine it into the this Javanese type version. And this is, I think, a very good exercise in uh, determining what part of Javanese script can be made varied and which part should be retained for legibility purpose. So we have here Coca-Cola, uh, Nike, uh, Sprite, Lint and with this, uh, which actually quite easy to make because as we've seen in, in its history, uh, Javanese script type was very intimate with uh, Euro uh, European typographic principles when uh, its metal type was first developed. Um, there's also like this, but there are times where the, uh, the inherent nature of Javanese need to be addressed. Like writing anything in the in Javanese letter can, tends to make it uh, make any logotype wider because the Javanese script is per letter is has more horizontal space than uh, Latin and you have kind of to like accept that and this is some of my other uh, works that I done for uh, titles and translation in TypeCon for 2018 so yeah I, I find this like exercise of Javanizing uh, existing logotype 
uh, fun and um, stretching what is possible for Javanese script while still adhering to their inherent qualities. It is uh, back to future. And uh, this is also what I did for, uh, for uh, a course by Type Design Club. So this is like a, a, a local Indonesian initiative uh, by uh, typographers such as Aditya Wira Atmaja, uh, which like try to collect uh, young people interested in typography and uh, uh, hold workshops, talks, so that uh, typographic works can be uh, explored more deeply. So uh, I I was called to be one of the instructor in Japanese lettering uh, course 2022. And this is some of the works made by the participants. So the end task is that they have to write a name, their name in Japanese script and make it into a typographically interesting, uh, interesting composition. And then they have to pick uh, any media like books, video games, or uh, film titles, and uh, anything they find interesting, and translate it from the original script into Japanese script, while still, you know, make it still readable, but able to uh, transfer its uh, design vocabulary. So this is by Anissa Lutfia Sari. This is her name, and this is her attempt at the uh, popular children uh, magazine Bobo. Uh, so here's the original one, and then he translated into uh, she translated into uh, Japanese, and this is another one uh, of my favorite by Umar Al Farouk. So this is his name, uh, which he made into like a Lego style a logo type, and then for uh, the second task, he uh, he tried to recreate the Horizon Horizon Forb Forbidden West uh, logo type. Uh, uh, it's a game uh, from the original Latin and into like futuristic Japanese, which which I think it's quite nice. And it, it has pred precedence in the many um, uh, advertisement in the Kajawa magazine, as we see. So I uh, give him many links for him to consider. And this is what he created, which I think is very nice. And this is some of my other works. So uh, I, uh, I work with Monotype as a consultant in making uh, second version of the Noto Sans Javanese. And uh, because as I've talked about before, like uh, all of this thing, like the the norms of Javanese script is still, you have to still search it manually and internalize it through many, seeing many publication and handwriting manuscript. There is no like a publication like uh, Javanese Typography 101, like uh, there's a lot of guides for Latin typography, but there's a not there's not a lot. I mean, there's non-existent for Javanese script. So I have to document and explain to them the the inherent characteristics of Javanese script uh, in in a way that is understandable and comprehensive. So it's, it's kind of tedious. So this is the <clears throat> first version of Noto Sans Javanese, and you can see that. Uh, the initial stroke in most of the letters are missing. So the designer who made this uh, font was actually trying to experiment with the with the experimental safe, space saving font from Dutch colonial era that I showed you before. And then it is uh, without consultations, Google used it and thought that average Japanese speaker would find it legible. Not at all. This is like uh, many people complain that it is missing its uh, initial stroke. So I came in and tried to make a second version of it. And I have to document like and give them instruction on like the the anchor and uh, how many combination can occur at that places, the conjuncts and the transformation of conjuncts that sometimes happens and it can be quite tedious to, uh, it, it's quite natural when you write it, but uh, like uh, making it into a organized uh, form that is transformable into coding is kind of uh, time consuming. So it, we have, for example, like if uh, this conjunct, the one below here is, uh, is connected with this, uh, 
diacritic then the conjunct have to transform into this like that and it's natural in handwriting but uh, yeah in order for make it into a code uh, you have to describe it one by one and yeah that is what i do to today uh thank you for your time and uh, i think uh that's it for me for me sharing it to you and i hope you find it interesting whoa by you my mind was blown i uh i couldn't stop writing stupid stuff in the chat just because i was like so overwhelmed um okay everybody we would like to open up the q a i only see one question in there now i have a couple of my own but it's time to drop your burning questions for Bayou in the Q&A. Bayou, let me hit you with one right off the bat. Which of these many scripts did you use for cheating in school? <laughs> uh, I developed my own writing style, uh, but I think uh, at the beginning, my handwriting was kind of similar to to this one, to Yogyakarta style in the beginning. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> so that that script would have been relatively illegible for most speakers, most of your instructors at the time, is what you're saying. Uh, any style would be would be illegible to to my instructors. So. Oh my god. Um, Javanese script is not taught. So I live in Jakarta, that is the capital city. And uh, Javanese script lessons are only applied to the province of Central Java, Yogyakarta, East Java, and some part of West Java. So I am in a place where there is near zero uh, percent of the population can read it. So my chances of being discovered were small. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, take some questions from the Q&A now. Um, Faye Darmawi asks, hi, when you say he, who do you mean? Raffles himself? I think Faye was referring to something that happened early in the talk. Okay, was it, was it this part, the Raffles paper? Faye, uh, can you um, clarify? Was it Raffles paper? Yes, Faye says yes, it was. Okay, yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, this is the this is the correspondence that is sent to Raffles himself. So in if you read each uh, letter, there is like, uh, this is letter from the region of Apa Papa uh, for uh, Thomas Stafford Raffles and uh, Raffles or Raffles himself or his secretary happened to save all of this paper. It is now codified and then now it is uh, put in the British Library. Who wrote the letters? Uh, uh, various rulers and regions or bupati in Java. So uh, Thomas Stanford have Raffles has a working report with all of these rulers. So he was uh, he is on a corresponding term. So as a diplomatic gesture, when Thomas Stanford Raffles uh, retired, uh, these regions or their scribe or their secretary um, uh, wrote to Raffles like, uh, "We hear that you are retiring. Thank you for your work all these years." La la la, and then yeah. Uh, most regions have uh, roi, uh, scribes, yes. Um, some of the scribes are more talented than the others. <laughs> I, I saw one of the letters were, was written by a scribe who crossed a lot of letters. So maybe the region is uh, cannot afford a good scribe. So yeah, a lot of this has very different uh, terms of quality and uh, stylistic variation. Okay, wow, Raffles himself. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Uh, um, Haran asks, does the Indonesian government support or hinder the development or the redevelopment, I guess, of Indone indigenous scripts or types? 
Are there organizations that support them? Okay. Uh, so this is a difficult question because uh, each script is, has its own uh, condition and it cannot be lumped together. But if I must say uh, gen the general situation is that the government is interested in preserving the script, but usually it doesn't have the resource to do it. So they may uh, uh, ratify a token, uh, a token rule that say uh, script must be preserved, but usually they don't have resource, resource to make a regular publication in that script. So they only make rules and like they uh, stipulate that uh, in elementary school, there should be a lesson of uh, traditional script. But usually what happens is that it cannot be allocated a lot of time. So only like four or five meetings and then you have a test. And then after the test, like all of the students forgot how to use it because, uh, yeah, because when you go outside of the school and like go shopping, play game and whatnot, no one used the script. So after the test, uh, really there's no practical reason to remember the script. Yeah, that is a true pity. Yeah, um, for the uh, organization, um, recently there are more like, uh, uh, organization that is um, more like group, like online group, like um, uh, supporters of Balinese script user, supporter of Javanese script user who uh, try to chat in uh, WhatsApp or Facebook with using that script. And then there is like organization like Pandi, um, that is a, a domain name, uh, domain name organized organization that are that took interest in script so there are a lot of regional uh, organization that are interested in it with differing uh, amount of activity uh, but there's not a single nationwide organization that uh, like regular uh, regularize this stuff okay well i'm glad there are some efforts at least to preserve these amazing scripts um, let's see another question. Oh my, I can't, I can't read Nancy's question. You're going to have to pop okay. into the Q and A. Can you, can you? This is that? in Indonesian. This is in Indonesian. Oh, that's, that's, I figured. Um, okay. Uh, but I can type my, you can type the answer. You can say the answer in English, right? Can you give me the, yeah, yeah. the question um, and answer? So she, Nancy Gunawan asks, mulai riset biasanya dari mana? Apa ada sumber yang anda rekomend? She asks, uh, where do you usually start researching? And are there any uh, any source you recommend? Okay. Uh, I think, uh, did, did Priscilla uh, put the links that I... Uh, that I give? Okay, so there yeah. are several ones that I can recommend. Um, the English Wikipedia of Javanese script is actually a good starting point. Uh, I help edit the, those page. There are um, uh, an overview of the script and then there are many examples of manuscript. But a lot of time, this type of um, uh, archival materials are still buried in like uh, English or Dutch repositories. So you kind of have to be a bit creative in searching in Google. You cannot just search in Indonesia, Aksara Jawa, you have to search in Dutch, Javan script, or you have to search with um, uh, other keywords like Javanese manuscript or title of manuscript like Serat Jaya Lengkara Bulang. So you, yeah, you, there is not a, yet a repository that uh, collects all this stuff. It's still kind of scattered. Okay, thank you. Let's see, Haran asks, what do script minorities think of other such minority scripts? For instance, do the Batak view the Javanese script as a competitor or as a sibling? Oh, okay. Uh, again, uh, Fran is asking heavy, heavyweight <laughs> questions. Okay, let me see the map. Okay, there are, uh, the question depends again on the script. Uh, so, um, in the island of Java, uh, there are two Indic scripts, the Sundanese and the Javanese. 
um, there are some, uh, especially in the early 2000s, uh, who feel that the Japanese script uh, uh, kind of uh, busting into the Sundanese territory. So these are two distinct ethnic groups. They spoke different languages. Um, and uh, so the West Javanese uh, government was once uh, very concerned that their uh, identity was being bullied, uh, so to speak, by Javanese. But um, usually if the cases are far, like Batak and Java, um, usually because their context is so different, uh, they do not squabble. Usually neighboring scripts that are uh, prone to squabbling. <laughs> oh my god just like siblings right okay. yeah and usually like uh not all of these uh, users would be aware that another script existed so i have a lot of cases like i'm writing javanese script that oh you can read traditional script what what script can you write i can write in javanese bali batak there's a batak script and then uh, you know, the, and vice versa. I'm showing Batak script to Batak people and they don't know that Bali in the script exists, something like that. Wow. Okay, I have another question. I'm going to pop in here just to ask you two things. First is you showed a few of your, your friends who are designing um, different uh, Javanese scripts, making type out of them. Can you drop those handles in the chat if... Uh, if you didn't already give them to Skilla, because I'm sure some of us will be delighted to look those people up and add them to our um, our Instagrams. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, wait a minute. I just posted all three of the articles. Oh no, I'm talking. He had he has friends who are type designers, and he briefly showed their um, their Instagram handles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, uh, I, this part, this part. Uh, this one, right? Yes, right, your friends. So if you can just take a moment and copy those or Pat, uh, if Skilla can write those down and drop them in the chat, I think people would like to follow these um, friends and watch the cool things that they are working on. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. They're coming. Um, and I don't want you to multitask, but we'd also like to know where people can go to buy your fonts. Uh, so embarrassingly, all of my fonts are always in development. So uh, because, <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, there is not a default font that uh, uh, with a golden standard coding, Usually uh, when I release one and then people complain, why does this combination does not work? And then like I keep uh, remaking it and uh, I'm not a very, I'm not an expert at coding. So mm -hmm. usually I, uh, I work together with people who are familiar with coding and then I was the, the, the glyph drawer. But there are some of my fonts that are uh, open source um, because uh, like the Notosans Javanese, I think it has become the default in in Windows and uh, Mac devices. Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, the one I, I work with Monotype. Notosans Javanese and Notosans Balinese. Uh, all of that is uh, a group, collab a collaborative effort. So I did not do it alone. And yeah, in uh, naraaksara.com, the one that is uh, uh, Priscilla put in the chat box. So that is a website where in, uh, designers who wants to share that their, um, their traditional script font can, um, can post it there. Of course, each of them with their own license and, and mm -hmm. whatnot. Uh, some of the scripts are in Unicode and some of them are not. So um, use caution. Okay, when, thank, uh, when, thank you. Um, did you get all those, uh, all the um, handles, Skilla? Are we, yeah, let's advance and then, then Skilla can copy that while uh, we talk about something else. I oh, have sorry, another, this, another this question. Okay, let me do this one from Catherine, who asks, it says, this oh, is- uh, uh, Sorry, I forgot. Uh, Aksaranusantara.com, uh, the, the place where you can download this different font, not oh, Nara Aksara, sorry. Okay. Let's continue. 
Okay. Catherine asks, this is very interesting and I would like to read more about this topic. Will you be publishing your research? Uh, um, some of them, uh, I already wrote it in an article for Type Guys and an article in Further Reading. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, Priscilla already, already put that in the chat box. You can uh, start there. And I think there are several old articles, but it's in Dutch. Mm. Uh, yeah, but other than that, I do wish that I could make an article that like uh, delves into more into this display type Javanese, but haven't got the time to uh, to start it. And hopefully, uh, I can do one in the future. Absolutely, let's get on that case, Bayou. Um. Let's see, we have, uh, ooh, here's a question. Can we get another look at the punctuation? Asks Emma or Emma K. Sure, here, we, here you are. Oh, wow. Did you have any uh, more specific questions about that, uh, Emma K or Emma? K? Or um, is that you just wanted to peek at them? So if I can wait, uh, let me see if I can find a bear slide. Okay, if, uh, a bear slide, uh, wait. Uh, okay, so the plain uh, version would be like this, if you can see me writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you can see, it can be very elaborate like this. It can be like that. Or um, usually in the beginning of manuscript, it can be extra, extra, extra. So it can be like this. So this usually begins the composition. It's wow. very extra, extra, as I said. Wow. Amazing. Okay. Um, oh, here's a question. We have a couple more from Faye who asked, did I hear correctly? Do you also speak and write in Dutch? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can puzzle a bit of Dutch and I asked a a, an acquaintance of mine who can speak Dutch, can you read this to me? <laughs> okay, well that, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprising to find out that you were so multilingual, but Catherine asks, how can we help preserve these Javanese scripts? And is it possible to learn to write them from here in the US? Uh, the second question is, yes, usually now uh, there's a bit of resurgence uh, in uh, among young people and you can usually found if you crawl around Instagram, um, uh, various small, uh, how do you say, uh, studios uh, offering quick course um, a quick course to Javanese script, like two or three meetings, and then you can at least write your name in the script. You can at least read the table and use the appropriate characters. So now there are a lot of online courses offering them, but you have to like troll Instagram to, yeah. uh, to know that. And uh, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, I think the most that, uh, that could help Javanese script uh, more is like, using it in a creative and inventive way because uh, many people here are already conditioned to like looking very plain looking Javanese script. So if there are more adventurous example of Javanese script in this style, in that style, while still like adhering to the inherent characteristic, it will show that Javanese script is like a living tradition and not some fuddy-duddy old, uh, uh, old scribal, old scribal stuff that you found on dusty tomes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that is a, a mental image that uh, hopefully can be shared with uh, from Javanese script. 
as I said before, there are a lot of cases in Indonesia where traditional scripts are romanticized as something that is inaccessible and people become intimidated and don't want to learn it uh, fully. I think I, uh, I told this to Grendel and Priscilla also that there are cases where like um, people has this um, old notebooks in their um, storage and then they uh, they cannot read it anymore and then they uh, create this romanticized version thinking that it is some long lost historic uh, records of uh, secret uh, meetings or whatever and then when uh, it is semi uh, ritualized like as an heirloom and then uh, a, a person who actually can read the script come in and then tries to read it and then it is a sale record of a horse like <laughs> yeah so people uh sometimes are intimidated that traditional script cannot be used for mundane and fun stuff. And I think if we can show that Japanese script, indeed it is used for a lot of high literature and esoteric stuff, but it also has practical purpose that can uh, be fun and adapted into inventive ways. I think that would really help the, the sort of bad rap it, con it, con it collected over the years. Oh my God, Bayou, that is hilarious. Okay, we have time for this one last one last question and now two just popped up. Ah, okay, let's answer them fast. Um, first of all, this one you can answer quickly. Can we see the slide with the Instagram of the person who creates and sells merch? Oh yeah, uh, that is uh, Bahnu, 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 Bahnu. Bah, Bahnu, did I spell that right? Maybe. Okay, we got it. Finally, Karan asked uh, his most tame question of the evening. <laughs> how much Javanese graffiti is there? Uh, I'm not a street walker, so I'm not a urban street explorer. Uh, I have seen like two or three uh, Javanese script. What? Two of them was kind of lame and one of them was good, but I did not dec document it. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think there is one artist who like make a, made a very interesting hybrid of Gothic Javanese and then he combined it with uh, graffiti style, but it was kind of a long time ago. I forgot his handle. Oh. So yeah, oh, okay. very, so yeah. Uh, the title here is uh, Hidden Diversity, very apply here. <laughs> and then Haran says, I asked because it's a sign of vitality, right? Uh, so maybe that's one way we can preserve Javanese script is get out there in the streets with our spray paint cans and plaster the walls and train cars with yes. some cool graffiti. Yes, okay. please do that in designated places. On that note, thank you so much for joining us, Bayou. That was amazing. And thank you, everybody, for joining in. Um, this will be, uh, it has been recorded and it'll be put up on our Vimeo site shortly. So you can review it and pass the link along to your friends who might be interested. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great afternoon, morning, or evening, whatever you're doing. And um, take care. Thanks, by you. Oh, by the way, you also get the chat and the Q and A in uh, right after this meeting. So, enjoy. By you, that was nuts. I gotta say, thank you so much. You really, um, you opened uh, my mind, and I immediately was typing into uh, the curatorial, um, the acquisitions team at Letterform Archive. I was like, we need to get some. Well, uh, thank you for tolerating my long rambling. I tend to get very off track if I if I'm not stopped. No, you did. You are very focused, and this was a very coherent and organized talk, and I really appreciate that as well. Um, but if you have any leads uh, or as to where we could maybe um, expand our collection of um, Javanese scripts, please don't hesitate to pass those along you know, 
old and dusty horse sales are also welcome. Mm. Oh, wait. Um, I'm responding to Haran. Oh, oh uh, yeah. Haran's yeah. still going after it. Okay. Yeah, got it. In, in the chat. So, uh, <laughs> Aditya Bayu Perdana, all of them is a name. Uh, I have no surname. So, okay. yeah, Aditya Bayu is kind of like John Doe in Indonesia. There's a lot of Aditya Bayus. And depending on the place, I, uh, I, I, I am sometimes called Bayu and Adit like that. <laughs> well, that, that's, uh, that's interesting. No surname, huh? Just one, one straight up name. Yeah, um, different uh, groups have different practices. Uh, Batak people have clan names. Okay. So they have two, uh, two unique names and then clan names that is uh, usually omitted, but remember by the person. Balinese people uh, have, have sort of a formula. So if it's the first, if it's a first male, it is named X, second male born uh, Y and Na, 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 na. And if it's if he is the descendant of the uh, some cast, there's usually this surname, uh, uh, not surname, uh, second name element, sort of that. So Balinese has a very strict uh, strict system. Mm -hmm. Javanese is more relaxed. Um, uh, there are, I think, uh, there are new rules now. But uh, uh, in the past, there are many people who only have one name, like. Um, one of the founder of Indonesia, Sukarno. His name is only Sukarno. There's no other name like that. Okay, thanks for thanks for clarifying. And now we really do have to sign off. Um, thanks again, and we'll be in touch. Bye you.